When we first started with Enlightened Soil, we sprayed this field and right across the fence, we didn't spray that field the same year. The hay was cut the same day, baled the same day, stacked the same day. But the macronutrients, most of those were all doubled. The manganese, magnesium, copper, zinc, potassium, all those numbers were significantly higher. Right then is when we noticed that our mineral consumption started going down and our cattle started looking better. We did the mineral test. All of our minerals, borons, were all up in the algae field versus the fertilized field. This is fertilized second cutting, and this stuff is algae. It's beautiful hay, but when you pull it out and compare the two, so you look at the color difference. Now you can see it on this just outside. This is a lot limer. This is like a deep green. We ran our pivots. They go on the same time and they got shut off at the same time. To run a true test, you had to, you, everything had to be comparable. Towards the end, this pivot was getting shut off a lot more because it was getting wet and holding water way better than the fertilized field. You can see what the grass looks like here and then just right outside the yard fence. Same ground, same everything, just no algae product on it. I applied the algae product, did two applications actually out on my center pivot. I applied it on these hay meadows down here and then my wife applied it in her yard here. And those aspen trees got quite a bit of it. They're still looking like pretty much June, July aspens and then all the other trees at this stage in the game, this part of October, are pretty well turned. We can only spray this out here once a year before the grass gets too high. When it's growing, we have a limited amount of water. That water didn't sink down through it like it has in the last three years. So as we continue to use this, our topsoil is improving because it's holding more water than it used to. I have noticed the ground get a lot softer it's actually a lot more workable ground now. I had an agronomist tell me this soil is so rocky and porous that when you fertigate, you know, apply fertilizer through your pivot, it just goes through the soil profile and it's gone. This algae is positively charged and so when it's applied on, even with a thousand gallons of water per eight ounces of algae, it'll stick on top and it won't wash away. Everything in this field is gonna get algae next year. But look at the difference. I'm seeing it right here. Just take a look at this. This is all dry land. We've had two tenths of rain since second cutting. You get the argument, well, you got sub-irrigated ground over there. Yes, we do, but why isn't the grass the same color? So there's a standby stand test right there for you to see with your own eyes. The fertilized field was stressed versus the algae field. Another thing we saw difference is in first cutting was the black stem. And so the, the, the alfalfa was laying down in that field and, and rotten from the bottom up like it does if you get wet and your alfalfa lays down. This stuff stood straight up and just kept growing up. The, the stem was really, really strong. Are you confident enough to be like, I'm just done with fertilizer? Yeah, 100%. I tried to make the product fail. And the reason I did that is because you get promised all this snake oil stuff where this product went out. I said, oh, if it's as good as they say it is, then I don't need to fertilize. I'll put it on the shittiest ground, on the rockiest ground, and put it in a situation where it gets the least amount of sunlight because we have a big, huge hill to the south where the sun sets. and rises so it doesn't see as much light as the other pivot and so everything about it was set up for it to fail and it, it didn't. Our last test is so I stacked fertilized hay and algae hay in different areas and so I'll be able to feed them side by side because they say that they'll go to the algae bale before they go to the fertilized bale. Typically when we get calves in our feedlot, they come from the mountains, they come from federal lands, high mountain pastures where people don't put out mineral, they put out a little bit of salt. So when those calves come to our yard, they're very, they're very hungry for salt, they're very hungry for mineral. We fill a mineral tub with a couple bags of mineral overnight and some salt just to catch them up and it's gone. I mean, in, in 24 hours, they'll eat 100 pounds. Well, Silas's calves came in on a Thursday and the mineral that we put in for his calves that were on the fields that, were, that had the algae in it lasted a week. And that just shows that the soil's feeding the plants, plants are feeding the cows, and they don't need that expensive mineral. It's, it's a big cost. It's grown right here in America. It's an American-made product. Uh, 
it's not a chemical fertilizer and that's that's one thing this country has to really get figured out we've been buying feed for 20 years and all we're buying is protein and tonnage and the feed is not delivering and when you just put chemical fertilizer on it then it kills that soil communication with the plant to pull any kind of macronutrients out of the ground and so the plant is actually feeding the cows for the first time I don't know how to explain it, I can just see it with my own eyes. And, and for me, I'm not a scientist, I'm a, I'm a rancher, but when I see that and see this and you can see noticeable difference, then that, that's what tells you the truth. The product speaks for itself.